everybody. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be um, how I use Microsoft OneNote to keep track of my planning and plotting of my current work in progress. Um, and then I also use it to track things as the book um, progresses through its lifetime. Um, I have a Microsoft 365 subscription um, that comes with OneNote. I do not know if you can use OneNote without a subscription or if there's other ways to use it. Um, I'll probably can look into that. Um, but today I'm just going to show you how I use OneNote, um, how it works for me. And if you already use OneNote, maybe it'll give you some ideas. Or if you were curious about using OneNote, um, perhaps it'll give you some insights on how you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and open OneNote and it opens up to my current work in progress um, which is here it's called Cedarwood and then I've got all these tabs that I use um, to keep my work in progress is progress, in, progress in order um, to open a new notebook you can click here down on this drop down menu and go right here where it says add uh, notebook it's going to pop up to this page you can type in what you want your notebook to be named so my current work in progress is called Breakwater. Then you can hit Create Notebook. Your notebook has been created. Would you like to share it with other people? I'm not going to do that now. So then it's going to open up a brand new notebook entitled Breakwater. Um, and now you can go ahead and add your sections and tabs. So this one... Um, uh, my first tab is always um, going to be my main character. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of my tabs. So first tab is going to be Amelia. She is my main character. If you go ahead and hit this um, add button, it's going to give you another section. So that's going to be another main character. So we're going to add Tanner in there. Same thing, we're going to add a couple of more of my characters. And then we'll be done with that. I have more characters, but I usually just tab the main ones that I'm going to have significant um, uh, correspondence with in the novel. So my next tab, um, after I do the character tab, is going to be, um, it could be anything. You don't have to do it in any particular order. You can do them in any order you want. Um, but I like to keep them in this kind of same order so it's the same thing for every single notebook that I use. So I've got the characters. And then I label um, this next one the town because where they live um, and where they work and where things happen, I like to keep information about their town. My next tab in the notebook is going to be plot, obviously. And then my next tab is going to be chapter summaries and then my last tab is going to be a calendar so those are all of my main tabs in the notebook if I go back to my first tab which is my main character Amelia I can go ahead and add sub pages or subcategories so over here where it says untitled page um, I can title this whatever I want the particular page or tab to be under Amelia. So each character tab has the same set of information. So I use inspiration as a tab. And then I can add page and add another tab. You'll type it over here. I do personal details. Now, on the inspiration tab, eventually I will pull pictures or drawings and add them in here of anybody that I think uh, I picture my character to look like. Um, and I'll put those pictures here. Under personal details is exactly that. I will put um, hair color, eye color, any kind of trait, um, if they speak a specific way, if they use specific words. I'll put all of that information down in here. Also, under each specific character tab, I have a section called Job Details, because that is very important, um, especially in my works, um, what they do for a living and, and their job kind of 
has a lot to do and takes place a lot of the time. Things take place at their jobs, on their way to jobs, coming home from jobs, and so on and so forth. Um, another tab I use for each character is um, negative traits. And then I also do a tab for positive traits. And then I do a tab for emotional wounds. Now, um, I've done prior videos, and I'll link that in the description box below, reviewing some of these um, writers, helping writers, um, writing resource books. There's the negative trait thesaurus, positive trait thesaurus, emotional wound thesaurus. Uh, there's a, an emotion thesaurus. There's an occupation thesaurus. I use all of those um, when I write. So when I sit down to put information in these, I will write, I will pick up the emotional wound thesaurus and I will fill out information from the thesaurus that fits this character. And I do these five or six um, tabs under each character. So when I go to Amelia, I can click on inspiration, her personal details, her job details, and so on and so forth. And I will do that for each character. I won't do that now because it's just the same adding. Under town, I will add a um, tab or a page for inspiration as well. So I can pull, and Google is great for this, I can just Google um, images that uh, of towns or neighborhoods. I mean, you can Google search anything, find a picture of anything. <laughs> so I'll put them in there, or pin, you'll go to Pinterest and look for things, and I'll put the pictures right on this page to kind of show you those things. Um, I also will add a tab or a page for um, work areas. Same thing if I need to put information about the character work areas or pictures about the work areas, I can do that. Under plot, I'm going to create uh, several pages or tabs. The first one is just going to be general notes. The second tab is going to be for uh, soundtrack. I tend to, I know a lot of authors will create a soundtrack of things they listen to that kind of get them in the mood to write certain stories or certain parts of stories. Um, I do the same thing. It's a little bit different for me though because I like to create a soundtrack of songs that I think reflect what my characters are going through or how they're feeling or something that they would connect with and then I keep those a list of those tracks there. Um, my next tab is going to be other characters. So if there's a minor character that might show up once or twice, or a character that might get mentioned, you know, my neighbor, Mr. Peabody, he's only going to get mentioned once or twice. He doesn't need a full tab. I don't need a whole lot about him, but I do want to make note that he exists and that he's a neighbor. So I can, um, if I ever need it later in the story, that um, he's Amelia's neighbor. And maybe he's nosy um, and likes small dogs. <laughs> I need to know that um, in case later on in the story. If I've mentioned this in the beginning and later on he shows up with a Great Dane walking around the neighborhood, that's not going to jive. So the next, and when you do, I'm sorry, and when you want to add something, you just click right in here anywhere and you can type or insert a photo or anything. Um, if you, I've written this here. Now, if I wanted to insert a picture, I can do that. Um, I'm just going to take a picture of my daughter, <laughs> and it'll insert it right into here. Um, and you can also, you know, make it smaller if you want, so it fits more in there. Another tab I use under plot is going to be um, interaction points and this is kind of when I just want to make a note of one character's interact if they interact at a certain um, coffee shop or a deli or you know anything like that I want to keep notes of when that happens and how often that happens then also under plot I'm going to make a tab for the main plot so I can have notes on what my main plot is 
and then I'll also add tabs for any subplots. I usually try to at least have two subplots, but sometimes it doesn't work out, sometimes there's more, sometimes there's none. Those are things that you work on as you write. <laughs> And then uh, that's all I do under plot. Now under chapter summaries, um, I will create a tab for each chapter, and that's all I do here. So um, on chapter one, and then every other chapter I'll have a tab for. Under the specific chapter, I will put in the same information. I put in page count, word count, Ending, because I like to know exactly where I left off the um, ending for that. Location, if they're at home, if they're at the beach, if they're on vacation, if they're on the road, whatever. And then I'll put um, draft one copy, and I will paste a copy of what I've written into OneNote so I have it for my records. And I do this same thing for every single chapter. So I will go ahead and copy this, and then I will create the Chapter 2 tab, and I will paste that same information here so I can fill it out every time I'm done with a chapter. And then my last tab is a calendar tab, and um, this all I'll do in this is I create a calendar and I try and paste it in here and I'll see if I can show you how to do that. I'm not going to make any promises that this is going to work but if I go into Cedarwood and I go to Calendar um, let me see if I can copy February just for let's see if this works. So I make these calendars in Word and then I just cut and insert and paste them into here. So let's see if this works. Nope, it didn't work. That's okay though. I'll figure it out. But I just make a calendar and I put it in here. I like, and a lot of people don't do this, but I like to have a calendar view of how my plot is progressing because my stories tend to be on a tighter knit um, storyline. They usually take place within days, weeks, or months. They don't take place years, um, hardly ever. So, and I like to keep track of those months. It doesn't have to be, you know, 100% correct. It doesn't have to be this year or whatever. I just kind of throw some dates on there and make sure I stay within those dates. Um, and those days, really. It doesn't really have a whole lot to do with dates. But I do like to keep track of the month I'm in and perhaps what day of the week things are happening on in correlation to other things in the um, story. So that, in short, is how I use OneNote. Um, again, a quick review. I just opened a brand new notebook, and each tab I use as a different item. So I have a tab for every character, every main character. And then I have a tab for the town, a tab for plot, a tab for chapter summaries, and then a tab, or a tab for calendar. And under each tab, we'll have different subparts or pages. So under every character, we'll have inspiration, personal details, job details, negative traits, positive traits, and emotional wounds. And every character tab will have that. Under town, you will have, or I have an inspiration tab, so I can put pictures of town and, um, Anything Google, I find off of Google information that I may need, as well as work areas. And then in plot, the different sub pages or um, tabs I have are general notes about the plot, soundtrack for the plot of the story, and the characters. Other minor characters, and again, here I just wrote about Mr. Peabody being Amelia's neighbor. He's nosy and like small dogs, and then I showed you guys how to insert a photograph. And then if you want to delete it, you can just um cut it. And then you can just cut this same thing if you decide not to not to use that. Um I also put interaction points so I can keep notes of where characters interact throughout the plot and throughout the storyline. 
And then I have notes for the main plot and the subplots as well. Under chapter summaries, um, each chapter gets its own tab or subpage. And on my chapter pages, I keep track of the page count for that chapter, the word count for that chapter, how the chapter ends, the location that's going on within the chapter, and then I just cut and paste a copy of the actual chapter. My calendar tab will just be a copy of a calendar so I can keep track of what is going on in the story. So that is how I use OneNote. That was a really quick overview um, and a quick kind of setup of a new notebook. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them and see if I can help you out with anything. Um, I, when I started using OneNote, I found it a bit overwhelming, but as I've used it more and more, um, it's become quite easy to use, um, and it's pretty easy to navigate to once you get used to it. So, Thank you guys for watching uh, today's video. If you enjoyed it, I hope that you hit our subscribe button. I also hope that you hit that like button, um, and I appreciate you guys watching, and I apologize if you heard any background noise. I have a cat who is very vocal, and he has been crying the entire time I've done this video. So thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next one.